So, something else I wanted to talk about with Tarkov. Talk I think this is a something that I don't think a lot of people really consider or think about when buying higher tier gear. Um, and why I feel like there's a big thought in the community as to why uh, better gear should almost always equal more profit most, more, more often. So, I think the major issue with that belief system is that, okay, let's take a hatchling, per se. Someone who's unarmored, just a pistol, or just a basic bare-bones rifle. They're going to bring in almost nothing, so they've got almost no protection. But they still are going to play safe, they're going to try to play smart, they're going to try to avoid getting a shot, and they're going to try to hide. Makes sense. So, let's say one bullet is all it's needed to kill. Or two bullets, or three. Say, they'll get shot in the arm, the leg, and the chest. Okay? So that in and of itself, they're fine. But say they spend... I think the current price of a trooper is like 60 to 70,000 rubles. Uh, they're going to take only a couple more shots. So you're increasing your ability to survive, given that you're still taking shots, you're still getting into fights. You're just going to increase the probability. But it's not a 100% increase, or it's not a 50% increase. It might only be a well, it could be a 50% increase, going from no armor to Gen 4, or Tier 4 armor. And that's something that you really have to keep in mind, because now it's not a guaranteed increase, it's just a chance that you're going to increase. Now, going from, say, no armor to Tier 4 armor is a 50% increase going from tier 4 armor to tier 5 armor is only going to be a 5-10% increase. So you are increasing your gear price a lot for only a, an into incre incremental gain in your chance to survive. You might tank one, maybe two more shots. See, that's why ammo is much more important than armor, and why you have to kind of think about the amount of money that you're spending per raid, per gear set. Like, I hear people talk about their gear that's worth a quarter of a mil, two quarters, or half a mil, three quarters of a mil, a mil, and I'm like, okay, but what happens when you die? Because the thing that you have to think about when you're talking about money in Tarkov is much more the how much does it take to justify my gear? You're pretty much putting an investment down and you're saying, okay, I'm going to try to make this much money with this gear to break even with each set of gear. Um, Say so you spend 100000 on your gun alone and you die at that rate. Well, you lost a hundred thousand. Great. But you made it out, you say. Uh, you make it out and you sell all the stuff that you pulled out of raid and you get out with fifty thousand rubles. I don't know. Shitty rig. Now it took or with that kind of math it'll take two raids to justify your gear. Okay. So if you make it one raid and then die the next, you've still lost money. You're not gaining anything. You're just losing money at that point. So, if you're taking in 750,000 ripples worth of gear and you're making back over the course of three raids, only 700 or 650,000 ripples you're still losing money because it takes raid after raid after raid of successful runs to guarantee, or not guarantee, but to justify the equipment that you're bringing in. 
And that's where I think a lot of people start getting hung up at, or at least getting confused as to why people who are earning so much are hatchlings. Because if you make it out of one raid, you're making a fuck ton of money. Because you've spent 15,000 on the gun and ammo. That's it. And you're coming out with that same 100,000 ripples, 50,000 ripples. So you are making so much more than you're getting as a full gear player. Or say a full gear player is going to make 100,000 to the hatchlings 50,000. But if both those players die in the next raid, the hatchling may 40,000 ripples. The high tier player lost so much. And it's, I hate to say it, but it is kind of down to chance. No matter how well you play, you can still run up against a player who gets a lucky headshot and you're out. No matter how skilled you are, that's, it's Tarkov. It's something that you have to remember when thinking about the game and putting your kit together. And so I think a lot of higher level, higher trader players think, oh, I'll put all this stuff together and I'll run this super meta, super good, full build weapon, best armor, full face shield, full ulting, spending hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of ripples, and their per rate value that they're able to get out, even if they kill a player or two, is only like 650,000 when they've spent a million. That means in order for that gear to be worth it and them to make even on that set of gear alone, they're going to need to live through two, three raids, and that's why it's an investment. Now, that's where I think people don't think about the risk versus reward. It's risky to send in a lot more uh, gear than it is to not send in as much gear. And I think this is the other point that people don't tend to think about when they're talking about pistols or like medium tier loot. I bring in bank robbers all the time because the first thing I think of when I see a body or when I'm going to loot a body after I've killed someone is I'm going to take their chest piece because that's 10,000, less than 10,000 I spent on a rig to carry ammo for a couple of minutes. And I'm coming out of rig with my rig or attack rig spot filled with something worth three, four times with a whole lot more slots. I'm creating slots in a rig. Um, if you're bringing in, say, trooper armor, you only spent 50,000. 60,000, 70,000, I don't remember what it's worth. But if you kill a player with a defender, a corrupt, a, and you pick that up and you take that out, or if you wear it, if it's not as beat to shit as your armor, or if it's just an upgrade, that slot, you can toss a trooper away, and you get the trooper back in returns, and you get a corrupt. You've just made 50,000 in a slot that's already being used. Whereas when you're a top tier player, you've got a slick plate. What are you gonna do with the slick plate? It's just gonna stay on your person. Or if you've got a defender, there's no reason to take it off unless your armor is more weak. Your ability to upgrade off of other players or raiders or things like that is a lot less powerful. For example, when a pistoling kills a player, they're gonna make a fuck ton of money because that gear that they didn't buy is now something they get to use to fight other players. There's been times where I've been running with a friend and my friend will charge ahead, get killed, and then now I have to deal with a pistoling who's now fully kitted. His investment for a full kit now was only 10000 for that pistol, that P226 Glock, whatever they feel like using. And so that's something I think higher tier players just aren't really thinking about, or at least they, they see that to be a major problem. And yeah, but I think players automatically assume I should just bring in the best gear all the time. That's the best way to play the game. I'm always bringing in meta M4s. I'm always bringing in meta HKs. 
all these meta AKs, all those things. When you have to think, okay, what map am I going on? What gear do I feel like could be upgraded during a raid? Like, again, I bring in a bank robber because I can find a tack rig on a staff that's bigger than that. So I've dropped that bank robber off. It's going to be back in return, so I don't need to buy a tack rig again later. And I can start collecting other gear, extra gear in these basically free slots. And that's why I think, as much as people hate it, rat rigs, they make sense in a way. And I think, again, with, like, labs, if you kill a raider and you get a high comp helmet and you're, you decided to only bring in a, uh, what's it, an RT or a penis helmet, you're going to get a high comp helmet, which is a 70,000 verbal helmet, you're going to also get to keep your 20, 30,000 ruble helmet for another time. And you're basically getting free slottage out of slots that you put basically placeholder items in. You bring in a, I don't know, basic bitch AK. You kill a player who's got a full kit AK. Well, his gun is now your gun. You brought in a piece of shit, and you're walking out, and you get to use during that raid, that decent kit. Same is true with raiders. If you kill a raider who's got a well-bit gun, all it takes is one face shot, and that, that rifle is something you get to use. Your risk is basically neutralized once you upload it, because, honestly, like, if you spent, again, that... 10,000 just for a pistol and that's all you're really using and you kill a raider you can drop that pistol aside that pistol will come back for another time and you get to put that helmet that kit and gear on so I think one of the only ways to solve this is to make scabs more deadly to make raiders much more deadly make it much harder so that when a player does to go in with very little armor, it's a lot harder to get that stuff. It's a lot riskier. It's a lot, um, they're more likely to die. So they're going to have to spend money on, uh, when they come out of raid, they've got to repair their bodies. That's five, what is that, 5,000 ripples? They've got to buy another pistol, another 10,000. So if they're going to keep trying it, they're going to be, um, spending more and more to run that basic kit to the point where they could be running an ADAR. They, they want, it, want people to basically be incentivized to bring the better kit. If you can survive long. Uh, that's another big thing with the ammo and the armor values as they are now. It's really good, but at the same time, armor isn't going to give you super great protection against someone running the highest uh, the highest damaging things. Um, the closest thing I can really think about to put this into perspective is looking at pro Counter-Strike players. Uh, primarily with head armor. If anyone kind of gets what I'm getting at, uh, late into the game when one team, the terrorist team specifically, has a lot of money, they're going to be able to buy AKs every round. And an AK is a one-top headshot. What's the point in buying a helmet in Counter-Strike if your opponent is going to be able to one-shot you no matter what? Through the head. So, kind of like a hatchling, um, Actually, I, I just thought of something. Maybe increase the amount of flinch that someone has without armor. Like, the heavier you are, the less flinch you have. That could be a way to incentivize bringing in armor. Or maybe how much you weigh. Like, if you're weighing a 50-pound gun and you get shot, your hand's only going to move 
things so much because that gun is going to take up a little bit of that inertia or at least spread out the force a little bit. Basically things that will make it so that if you are bringing that heavier gear, you are more likely just increasing that um, increment gain from spending money. But again, I think the best way to make money in Tarkov is to bring about mid-tier gear and start upgrading, but making sure you're always bringing good ammo. Um, because what's the point of trying to kill someone if it's going to take you 30 shots to kill? I know that's kind of ridiculous, but with some leg matters, it, it makes sense. But if you're bringing M855 and you're trying to kill a player with a grunt, you got to be going for that head. You have to be. Because that grunt is going to absorb so much damage and give that person time to react. Which I think is what armor is really for. Giving you more and more time to react to things. And I think that's why... I know I'm kind of rambling at this point. But hatchlings really have to be skilled if they want to be able to take down players. So a hatchling is just going to try to hide. So another thing that you could do is maybe... Uh, again, make more make scavs a little more lethal. Make them able to detect a little bit more. Maybe increase the number of scavs in a given raid. That would probably be the best way to do it to avoid the problem of hatchlings. Because if there's more scavs, you have to fight more enemies to pick up the gear alone. But that does kind of hurt the issue, or hurt the chances of just one person. That's the main problem with uh, looking at some of the late game and money issues with Tarkov, is that everything you change is going to affect everything else in the game, just a little bit. For example, if you increase the number of scabs, you're increasing the number of guns that are in a raid that can be taken out, you're increasing the amount of loot able to be retrieved by any given player. And it's not necessarily an issue, but at the same time, it's you're going to start running into economy problems. Now, I do think the thing... Maybe we can only sell ammo on the flea market in increments of 30 or more. I think that would make sense. Or, again, I can only see that really going for ammo. Maybe nades. Maybe if you've got five nades, you can start selling five nades. But you have to collect that a little bit more. So you can't just sell things right when you get out. But then you're just going to start running into the problem where, oh, I finished a raid, I've got a bunch of, like, one or two items around from that raid, because it's not like you can go into a raid and say, I'm going to pick up 60 rounds of BP, BT, or BS, or whatever, and you end up with a box of 30. Sure, you can sell that, or maybe you found some loose BT, and it's 20. Well, that BT is just going to sit in my inventory, and I use BS exclusively, uh -huh. so that BT is pointless to me. But I don't think that's as much of a problem. I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm interested to see if anyone else has other ideas for Darkov, because I really want the game to succeed. Uh, in my last video that I filmed, like, an hour ago. I think contracts would make a lot of sense, and more exclusive marked rooms that are locked behind specific doors, like, uh, say, once you finish all the quests a trader has to give, that's when you get a trader key, and that trader key opens a specific door with specifically, basically making more exclusive marked rooms. But at the same point, then you're kind of getting rid of some of the value of a marked room, or at least making it a little safer by increasing the number of mark rooms. Because if you've got three groups and there's only one mark room, they all have to go to the same mark room. 
but if there's four or five marked rooms and three groups, well, two of the groups might go to one, and one of the, the other group might go to another. So you're increasing the diversity of places on the map to go. Funneling players, it does kind of encourage higher gear, tier gear, because Hatchling is not going to survive a funnel as well as a gear player. Well, that's all I have for now.